Welcome to Kitchen 143. I am your host, Michelle Aventajado, and I am so excited to spend time with you today while we're here in the kitchen. Today, we're going to ask the question, how do we nourish and heal our bodies? Um, and we can do this by, of course, making our pantries and our kitchens just a little bit more healthy with some holistic choices. Joining me today are my friends Hindi Weber and Melanie Tango of Holy Carabao. And together, we're going to show you some recipes, some ad lie recipes that you guys can make at home. So as always, you know you can watch out for some quiz the cook questions. We will change things up just a little bit today. So stay on the lookout and of course pay close attention because we will be quizzing you on what we're sharing. Okay, so we are broadcasting live and so remember that um, we love to find out where you are tuning in from and of course, if you have any questions or you have any comments, we love to interact with you guys. So let's get started. For me, um, I've always looked up to Hindi and Melanie from Holy Carabao for healthy ways to live, um, different ways to prepare healthier food at home. And I'm so excited to welcome them here on screen. Um, to get us started for our holistic health and, of course, getting our kitchens a little bit healthier. Good morning, mm -hmm. every. Oh, good afternoon. Isaac, where are you tuning in from? Hi, ladies. How are you? Hi, Mish. Good afternoon. Hi, everyone. Hi, Mish. We're so happy to be here with you. So exciting. I'm, I'm it's so live. Happy. Yes, it's live. I'm so happy you said yes. You were up for the challenge of, of course, shooting because we're all at home, right? We get to do this in the, in the beautiful, in our own kitchen, keeping everyone safe. So thank you for saying yes. And to get started, could you tell us a little bit about Holy Carabao and what makes it so holy? Well, Holy Carabao is a farm that was founded by two moms right here. Um, in 2007, 2007, so wow. that's uh, like 14 years ago already. Yes, it is. Wow. The, the basic premise, um, the intention from the very start was really uh, for healing, healing of the family. And we right. each had our own um, health challenges, Melanie with hers and um me and my family as well. And we look, we look to food for healing, yeah. right? And yeah. um, after doing all our research, the conclusion was basically we had to start growing our own food so that we could come up with the most trustworthy food possible for our children. And That's right. you can imagine this was 2007, so nobody really knew about organic or biodynamic yet. So a lot of it had to do with um, educating our, our market as well. So we're like, how do we express how the the importance of biodynamic farming, regenerative agriculture of the soil, of the carabao, you know, the friend of the right. farmer, and right. how truly reverent we should be about food. And so that's why it was like holy carabao, like a play on holy cow, right? Because we, right, we, right. we wanted kids to pick up on it too really quick. And uh, but really, actually, what it means is holistic, like we cover all the different aspects of the farm from people to animals to the soil, the seeds and of course, not just the customer. It's not just that, that it's not just money as the bottom line at all. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, so this is really, truly the case where we can see that mama's on a mission, providing the best they can for their families is beneficial to everyone. So yes to the greater good. Yes to making things holier, holistic, and of course, healthier for all of us, because we know that food really is medicine when we when we have, when we monitor our intake and we do it mindfully. So if we were going to ask um, you guys, um, who we consider our experts. Um, 
how, what are some steps that our viewers can take, like right off the bat, if they wanted to make their kitchens or their pantries healthier? Like what are some suggestions that you can um, share with them that are, you know, fantastic and great, a great start and easy to do? Okay, we can talk about five categories that we can um, swap ingredients uh, with just to give us a give us a start in the kitchen to keep it um, to get it healthy and because it's so overwhelming we think that these five areas would be a good place to start so number Mel one Melly, Melanie and I usually give like two hour long lectures on this so we're giving you the special edited version for kitchen 143. <laughs> Thank you. It's super condensed and I'm sure that everybody will benefit. And if they want to take the two hour long course, they can, right? They can do that by visiting the website. Yes, that's possible. Okay, yes. great. Okay, we, we can start with the oil. Uh, we all use oil for cooking. And um, so the important uh, things about oils that we look at is it has to be cold pressed. Um, unrefined, deodorized, uh, un -deo not deodorized, or bleached. So when we talk about yeah. cold press, um, not, uh, no heat is applied in extracting the oil. And then unrefined meaning, you know, there's it is minimally processed. Um, right. And um, the oils in the market are mostly um, deodorized and, and bleached to, to have a you know, uniform color and smell. So, so this should this should be not not deodorized, not deodorized and not bleached, right? Right. So examples of that would be uh, extra virgin olive oil, um, cold pressed coconut oil, right? Avocado oil, right. yeah. Some nut oils yeah. like macadamia. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, and. The second thing um, to look at uh, is to make sure they're they're not uh, hydrogenized. Hydrogen right. <laughs> yeah. Hydrogenized. It's a tongue twister. Yeah. And then um, we also oops back a slide. We yeah. And we have to make sure it's pure and not mixed with poor quality oils. So when you go to the supermarkets, mm -hmm. you see a full range of olive oils, for example, you've got the extra virgin, the virgin, right. and then you right. have the, the blends. So right. it goes with other oils as well, even sesame oil. Uh, I think it's important for us to still look at the ingredients and that's where we'll see if other oils were added. Uh, sometimes mm. you'll see um, that you have vegetable oil, vegetable oils added to um, to these oils, and then of course the quality is not the same anymore. Yeah, right, vegetable right. oil sounds so healthy, right? Because it's from a vegetable. But, what could be wrong yeah. with? It? <laughs> and then you right. have a sticker that says heart healthy or or lowers cholesterol. So please don't right. fall for those badges and really do your research. Since we use oil almost every day in our cooking, right, so right. we get that right. Right. Okay, so after oil, what would be the second, um, the second most important thing we could swap out in our pantry? Oh, before we get out of the oil segment, it, we like to cook okay. a lot of animal fats as well, right? Provided mm -hmm. you're not vegetarian or vegan. So, right. um, yeah, so we use, if you follow keto or paleo, you can use tallow, butter, ghee, lard, mm -hmm. lard. Yes. So very good to work with as well. As long as the source of uh, these uh, oils are also clean. But they're also? Uh, clean and organic, preferably. Clean, yes, okay, I understand, okay, okay. Next so, slide. Uh, yes. Everyone's favorite, sugar, uh-oh. <laughs> well, um, yes. yeah. This is like one of the most um, distributed drugs in the entire planet, right? <laughs> I think right. um, everyone to a certain degree is addicted to sugar, especially children. I mean, they start off really young, right? But right. Not, right. not all sugars alike. I mean, they're not all bad. 
Um, mm -hmm. We like to use coconut sugar, um, muscovado sugar, and mm -hmm. um, things like cocoa nectar, wild honey, pure maple yes. syrup, um, monk fruit. Monk fruit, they're, they're this new generation um, sugar alternatives like monk mm -hmm. fruit, erythritol, stevia, of course. But you also have to make sure that these um, alternative sweeteners are, are not overly processed because it's so easy <clears throat> to, to mess around with that and have additives and all kinds of things, right? So right. we like to keep our sugar or sweet sources whole as much as yes. possible, right? Yeah. Um, and it also depends on your diet, right? If, if you're on a weight loss diet or if you're in a ketogenic diet, things like that, low carb, then you're gonna wanna limit your sugars to things like yacon syrup and date syrup and monk right. fruit. Um, but if you're not, then we just want you to switch your white sugar yes. or, or your brown sugar to whole sugar like muscovado and coconut sugar. Okay. Yeah. Yes. The big thing yes. is we have this available locally. The best quality in the world is available here. Here, absolutely. And this is where it's proudly Pinoy. Definitely, we love local when it comes to these sweeteners. So if I'm going to summarize then for sweeteners and sugars, anything that's as close to the raw form as possible is what we should be looking for. Exactly. So, yeah. Right. Okay. Awesome. Generally, that's the rule that we follow for everything. Yes. Yeah, everything. Close. That's yeah, as close as possible right. to its original form. I also right. um, like like to switch around my sugar. So I, I won't have the same sugar every day because then the body okay. develops kind of like resistance to it and then your blood sugar, you know, fluctuates. So I like to like wow. one day I'll use date syrup, the next day it's monk fruit, and the next day it's cocoa sugar and, you know, that kind of thing. Mix it up. Interesting. I never even knew that. Okay, so your body develops like a resistance or even in some cases for sugar, the addiction. Right. right. Like a dependency, like a dependency on it, yeah. Interesting. I okay, so after cycling also. Yeah, it's called cycling when you don't stick to uh, one thing, even with meds. Okay. With food, it's good to, right. to switch things around. Right, I'm writing down and taking notes, ladies. Thank you for sharing so much. Okay, so after sugar, then we have salt. Um, for salt, it would be the same. Real, we don't like um, salt with additives. Unfortunately, even in the markets today, when you ask for um, rock salt, they'll proudly say that it has um, iodine added to it. So right. we'd like to avoid that because yeah. um, it affects uh, the gut uh, bacteria and you know something as Something real and natural is always better. Um, so we like to use local sea salt, Celtic mm -hmm. salt, Melanthic salt. Right. So again, you have uh, different types of salt and it's always fun to use. You know, I have to have different textures that will, will make uh, plating and eating more fun. Absolutely. Um, I love when, drinking. When, when modern, um, major problem we have with our salt supply now is the uh, prevalence of microplastics. So even if oh you a natural sea salt, they could have microplastic contamination in them, right? So, right, right. You know, that's just one of those things you kind of have to pray over, like, I hope this salt, I mean, because, <laughs> like, how do you even figure that one out, right? Right, right. <laughs> you can just well, try to get the best source for your salt but don't take it right. for granted right. and there's also right. a lot of fake pink salt out in the market so that's another thing to look out for. okay i didn't even realize that but i guess that makes sense people are always faking things right <laughs> so i always thought that if it was himalayan salt it'd be totally safe but bringing that up into it you know, kind of makes you think now, which I know this whole episode will make us think and will just give us different ways to um, make healthier cho choices all along the way. So after salt, I think we have two more left, no? 
We seasoning. have seasonings. Yes. Ah, this is all like the sao sao one and the things that we, so many of us use, right? So I know we can make healthier choices with this. So yeah, what do you, I, I, yeah I where up, should we start? I grew up with, you know, hot dogs and nor or Maggie yeah. luncheon meat, liquid seasoning. So I, I grew up with all that, like on my sinangag and everything. Um, but when you're our age, or even like certain children with with sensitivities, we really right. have to be careful with the MSG content, right? And the quality of the sodium content in the seasonings. There's also right. a lot of seasonings that contain a lot of sugar, or mm -hmm. or syrup. corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, or even hydrogenated oils, right? Right. So I, a lot of people like really trendy right now are, is, is like chili garlic oil, right? So just make yeah. sure that the oil in the chili garlic it's oil is good really, oil. really good quality oil. Cause oil, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's where I guess sometimes it's just easier to make it at home, which is why you guys started everything, right? You wanted to know exactly what was going into it. That definitely makes a difference. Me, I was surprised at ketchup. I didn't realize how much um, sugar or corn syrup was in ketchup. And when I realized that, I was like, oh, okay, time to switch. So yeah. we like ketchup in our house a lot. Yeah, yeah. so do we. We, we like ketchup too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after the seasonings and the liquid seasonings and being mindful of not um, giving our kids MSG, or our families, or even ourselves as we're getting older, um, greens. How should we look at that? Sorry, I forgot to... something about the seasonings, Mish. Sorry. Sure, sure. Something important. I know we always buy the soy sauce and the vinegar together, right? That's kind of a staple yeah. in the pantry. So for always. us, we replace the usual soy sauce with tamari, mm -hmm. right? It's like a gluten-free soy sauce or liquid aminos. Mm -hmm. Or cocoa aminos, which is also a local product. Yeah. So cocoa aminos, right? And then, of course, the vinegar, you can get really good local artisanal vinegars. Um, so just really just be careful with the quality that you get. There's so many suppliers now, like in weekend markets, farmers markets, that you can right. support also. Right, right. And I definitely, I've tried the Coco Aminos, the local, um, uh, the local brand. I think it's, uh, it's a, it's a local brand also. I tried it. It, it tastes awesome. It tastes great. I mean, you wouldn't know. I swapped it out and my kids didn't even know. Yeah. So awesome. Okay. So I see we have here. Before we go to our last one, I see we have here some of our um, viewers are commenting. Jane Domingo Santos uses stevia, cocoa sugar, and muscovado. Yes, two thumbs up for that, Jing. I'm sure Hindi and Melanie will approve as well. Hi, Catherine, tuning in from Maritina. Thank you for letting us know where you are. I hope everyone is okay over there. It looks like it's starting to rain a little bit here. Guys, make sure you're paying attention because, of course, we will have quiz the cook questions. But before we go on, let um, let us ask Hindi and Melanie one last thing we should swap out in our pantries and our kitchens just to keep everything a little bit healthier. I think we have one more. Yeah, we'll talk about grains. We all have some form of grain every day or with every meal. So, again, we like it whole, raw, raw. And sprouted is a term that is used um, to activate. Um, it's a process. So you, you soak the grain or the nuts um, in order to activate it and make the protein more digestible. Um, that's something we do. And then um, we, we have a lot of rice alternatives, white rice alternatives. So you have the brown, the black. Um, there's also couscous quinoa, and then cauliflower rice and shirataki rice. So we like to try different types of rice um, or grains, you know, uh, because these have uh, lower sugar and then they have more protein in them. So it's healthier. 
Absolutely. Uh, much healthier than just the white rice, white right? Rice. So me, I love the different kinds of rice that are available to us now because they do taste nuttier. The texture is a little bit more like it's not as mushy, right? And even um, some of the other grains that we're getting used to. So you mentioned cauliflower rice. I was on cauliflower rice. That's all I ate for like three months. <laughs> and it's delicious. Um, but I nothing for me beats like brown rice or even red rice. I have a friend who mixes her brown, her red, and quinoa, and that's their carb when they have like a rice option. That's their rice option. So um, I'm so glad that you mentioned uh, all the different ways that we can swap out white rice with different grains. Um, and, you know, you mentioned ad lai. And of course, we're, we're going to be sharing two recipes. You guys created one and I created one as well. So um, three of our lucky viewers who will be typing in the correct answers for our quiz, the cook questions, will get to take home a DIY ad lay kit that has the Kiboa Ridge Farms um, ad lay as well as chicken and turmeric and um, eggs and all of this delicious stuff that we know um, goes into ad like caldo or our scaldo. So are you guys ready for the question? Do you guys think we should have a question for them now? Yes, make yes, it interesting. yes, yes. Okay, so let's, um, let's change it up this week. So I know that you guys are really excited and every time um, you type in those answers so fast, we are going to actually change it up. So question one, we will choose the first winner who types in the answer correctly. Question two, we will choose the fourth winner. The fourth answer correctly will be the winner. Question three, because it's one, four, three. Question three, we will choose the third person who answers correctly who will win the DIY kit from Holy Carabao and Kiboa Ridge Farm. So if you guys are ready, the first quiz, the cook question is, Hindi and Melanie gave five examples of white rice alternatives. Please share four. We only need four of the five. We talked about them earlier. So again, this is the first person to answer correctly and I see we have we have quite a few comments coming in so you guys if you're hi Agnes we're so excited hi Mark and Frank hello glad to see you guys again Um, so, Melanie and Hindi, if you want to see the answers up on top of your screen, you'll see the private chat and then the comments on the side. So, click on the comments and you can see everybody's side, everybody's oh, answers. Oh, there you guys yeah. are. I thought it was yeah. so fun. Yeah. I was like, hey, you everybody. <laughs> there they are. So, you can chat with them too if you want and you're reading oh their comments. Oh, my gosh. So, there, there, there. So, um, I do believe we have a winner, and she <laughs> she is our Kitchen 143 Suki. I think her internet must be super fast <laughs> where she is. <laughs> so, Jing Domingo Santos, you answered correctly with quinoa, cauliflower, adlai, and couscous. Bravo. So, you will get your own DIY adlai caldo kit care of Holy Carabao and Kiboa Ridge Farm, where you have everything you need to make a beautiful dish of Adelaide Caldo, which is perfect during the rainy season. So, okay, aside from, now guys, the next questions won't be the first people to answer correctly. The next questions, remember, it's one, four, and three. So number, the second question, the fourth answer who answers correctly is the one that we will get. So you will have to time your answers. <laughs> um, I did want to talk uh, about Mark Ebo. He mentioned earlier, he, one of his questions was, he thought that iodine in the salt was a good thing. Ladies, can you tell him why it's not? 
I know you mentioned it briefly, but let's just, um, because he commented, I feel like he might not have heard us. Oh, okay. Iodine is used to to kill bacteria, so it also kills the good. And if we consume food that has iodine, then it will affect the 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 gut bacteria. And so that's not something that we'd like to have. We, we'd like a balanced gut to help in our digestion. And as we know, it's the seat of immunity. Right. We do. Everything starts in the gut. There are um, other things yeah. to supplement with iodine that are more measured also. Okay. Okay. I know that spinach is high in iodine, right? Is that, yeah. is, or is that, I'm thinking of folic acid. I know I had to eat a lot of spinach. I would eat a lot of spinach when I was pregnant. <laughs> is that a good source? Yeah, malungai, mm -hmm. you know, um, I seaweed definitely seaweed, and seafood. Yeah. So the natural okay. sources are always better. Um, we're, it, I do we have an iodine supplement though. Um, like a little put on the skin. No, like a dropper. Okay. Mm, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that Mark, I hope we answered your question. Um, aside from you know swapping out these ingredients in the pantry for healthier ones, we also know that we can choose um, healthier, greener fresh vegetables, fresh herbs, fresh spices, even from our gardens, different things that we can incorporate into our cooking. And because we love to teach by example here at Kitchen 143, um, Melanie and Hindi prepared a very special dish using Adlai now. So um, while we show the video, Melanie and uh, Hindi will share how they put together this Adlai paella. So I just want to say that I think you guys are the bravest souls ever for cooking over an open fire. You're rock stars. When I saw your videos, I was like, oh my god, they cooked over open fire. Was this super difficult? Have you done well, this before? We've never done this before. It's the first time we shot, you know, this cooking outdoors. But it's something that we've always wanted to do. We knew we'd have so much fun. And it was just the perfect, you know, recipe for, for an outdoor cookout. So, um, I think the, the hardest part was because you only have one one shot at it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. You can, can't make any mistakes, but fortunately it turned out really well and we had so much fun. But we were, you know, swimming and bathing in smoke the whole time. But, you know, it didn't really matter. It was really, we had a great time. It looked like it was fun and it looked delicious. So here you guys are sauteing um, onions and garlic. Yes, we're, we're sauteing the seafood separately mm -hmm. and then setting it aside. Okay. We don't, yeah, we so we don't cook it together with the adlai yet. We're setting it aside. What right. you don't see behind the scenes is the pai pai doing that. <laughs> <laughs> for the fire or for the flies? And the flies. For the coming, flies. Right? <laughs> when seafood comes out, the flies always come. Yeah. And we didn't cook so. the seafood through um, because we'll be cooking it again over the adlai. So we just made right. sure we didn't have to cook everything. And then okay. added um, chicken broth to, to flavor the final dish. Right. So we, we use fresh chicken broth, not bouillons. Yes. Okay, Always so, better. Why, so we set aside the seafood and then we start, we're, now we're working on the the base of the actual adlai. So it's first the, we put some onions and garlic. Mm -hmm. And then chicken. And, and this recipe for everybody who is tuning in also, this recipe will be available on as a recipe card on in the column. So you guys don't have to worry. You don't have to take notes. Hindi and um, Melanie shared the recipe with us, so. Next, we have the chicken, and then that's chorizo, yes? 
Yeah, um, although we know that, you know, paella snobs might raise their eyebrows <laughs> because there's chorizo and other ingredients that you normally do not find in a paella. For us, we just wanted something that was fun and, you know, what was available and that was more important, you know, than sticking to the authentic recipe. I think there's a time for that and there's also a time to have fun. Definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm I'm not a stickler for any of those kinds of rules. If I like it, if my family like it, it likes it, if it's our personal preference, I mean, who's to exactly. say, right? Yes, we yes. can enjoy it however we like it, as long as our, our kitties are happy and we know it's healthy. Right. So we at this point we we're putting some turmeric or luyang galaw. And um did it show that we put kasubha already? Not oh, after coloring, yeah, I think we did. We hard boiled the eggs. Now we're peeling the peppers and slicing them. These are all being set aside for for later as toppings, as garnish. Well, so. Um, paella is just as colorful as it is delicious and with all of these fresh vegetables I know many of them came from um, the farm and the garden but I think some I remember we were talking about this earlier you guys foraged for some things there too yes. right we found some mushrooms that morning um, just outside so we, did, we decided to add it and then we saw that the squash had flowers and why not <laughs> so we threw right. all that in there and surprisingly, the kabute or the mushrooms tasted really, really good. And we've never had it taste that good, but we've had it in other dishes. Uh, we were just okay. talking about it earlier, but this time it really stood out. So these mushrooms, Maybe. these pamarang mushrooms, only come out once a year, right? And wow, especially during a rainy season with a lot of lightning. So they're very special. They can't be cultivated in a farm. So. Foraging for these mamarang kabute is something very, very special. It is. I want to go mushroom foraging with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine why they tasted so good as well. You picked them like right that morning. Um, I saw squash flowers in some of the other ingredients there. So you have your sitao and... Oh wow. So you guys are putting a banana leaf. Yeah, that's something we decided to do right there because as we were cooking, we were talking to our staff and, you know, they were sharing how they cook back in the province and they said that they always like to put the banana leaf over something they were cooking. So, yeah, we ran to the tree, got, you know, a leaf and put it over. And I think it also added to the, the flavor of the fragrance. Yeah. I, I believe it did. I know there are healing properties for squash flowers. So as an Italian, I've eaten them battered and fried a hundred times. Um, but here you guys <laughs> put it on top of the paella. Um, what are some of the healing properties? Do you, do you want to share some? I also oh, did a little um, research, so I can share perfect, some too. Perfect for um, what we're going through now. The squash flowers actually boost immunity and okay. they treat rhinitis, allergies, and colds. Okay. okay. Um, from my research, they're also really good for strong bones and eyesight. What do you have in your... Yeah. I did Same. And, and of course, I also know it also boosts male fertility in case someone's oh, needing yeah, to know that, that right? Yeah. So maybe that's why the Italian moms always give their... <laughs> their, 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 their <laughs> We eat that fried and battered all the time. Maybe fried is not such a good thing, but that's that's how I've had my squash flowers. Okay, um, but there are so many healing properties to all those vegetables. That paella looked delicious. The colors were all there. So one of the things that I've actually told my kids, by the end of the day, they should have eaten five different colors of vegetables or fruits. And in your paella, you had five different colors already. So that actually is... Um, the, the best kind of dish to put on the table for the kids, right? Because it, it's all there. Mm -hmm. 
Do you guys think we should do another quiz the cook question? After yes. learning so yes. much about the paella and the different healing properties of the vegetables and the specialness of the mushrooms, like so many fun things. And I, I'm kind of jealous. I'm in a condo. You guys would see things that are fresh and ready to harvest. And you're like, oh, let's put this in. There couldn't be anything better than like making a paella that way. So next time you guys make paella, I'm coming over. <laughs> <laughs> you should. So, okay. Here's the question number Is the cook number I'm two? ready. Okay. So I'm, I'm ready. Name a healing property of squash flowers. Um, name there were so many of squash flowers just one yeah, we named a lot so while we're waiting for everybody to answer um we will say hello so you guys are answering um we see anna hi anna and richie my cousins are tuning in Mark said the answer about uh, the iodized salt was surprising. So he's thankful that we shared um, why it's not so good for him. And oh, Jing also had a question about salt. We'll come back to that. But let's see. Oh, we have some. Remember, guys, the person who wins this is the fourth person with a correct answer. The fourth person to answer with a correct answer so we'll take three correct answers before that and the fourth one is the one who will win and so hindi and melanie if you want to check um at the the yeah. private chat uh we have the social media team who is monitoring all of the answers right um so i also want to say hello to agnes and Oh, Agnes is putting a lot. Hi, Chris. You're back. Good to see you here. Josephine, she's got an answer. Okay, so let's see. I think we have fourth person. One, four, three. Anthony, uh, Anthony. One, four, three. Melanie will be the one to announce. Let's see, our fourth winner. Fourth would be Catherine Sikat. And she says, boosts male fertility. Oops, wait, let's double check. Fourth, fourth, let's scroll down one more time, Melanie. Um, let's see, guys, double check. Fourth answer, yeah. fourth correct answer. Let's check one more time. Fourth person. Yeah. So, um, Melanie, you can check the private chat. I think they, the the council has spoken. Okay. <laughs> Agnes Reyes, and she says yes. boost immunity. Yes. Agnes has it. Very good. Congratulations, Agnes. I hope you live within Metro Manila because the items that we'll be shipping to you are perishable. You will get Adlai from Kiboa Ridge Farm, fresh vegetable, uh, fresh um, luya, eggs, chicken, and everything else that's included, kasubha as well, from Holy Carabao. So um, the team will be in touch and they will get your address and um, contact information. So for those of you that were paying attention, we do have um, squash flowers have so many healing properties. Um, it's anti-inflammatory. It's good for heart disease. It's good for boosting immunity. Um, it's good for, um, for male virility as well. And it even improves skin. Um, it's anti-aging and prevents eye degeneration. So that's good for me because as I'm getting older, my eyes are failing me. That's why sometimes you see me going a little bit closer <laughs> to the screen. Okay, so another ad my dish that I am excited to share with everyone. Um, this one I created. So um, we're going to first show you the video and then we'll talk about some of the healing properties of this dish as well. Are you guys ready to see how I made odd like caldo? All right, let's do it.
So when cooking the adlai, I realized that the barley, the, it's also called Job's Tears, right? It really soaks up all your liquid or your chicken stock that you use. So you have to make sure to double, um, double your, if you have a cup of adlai, you have two cups of your liquid. Um, and here when I was slicing the turmeric uh, or the luyang bilao, um, I realized that I forgot it stained your fingers. So the whole video, my fingers are yellow, but good stuff, it's okay. Um, ginger, using both regular ginger and the turmeric or the luyang bilao. For me, I like it because we like our, um, I'd like caldo or aras caldo as well. We like it a little bit, uh, very rich, very ginger rich, because we like that bite. Um, even onions have healing properties, right? There are things we use onions for. I learned, um, ladies, have you ever heard of putting an onion in the room if someone's sick? I've heard have of you ever heard of it? Yeah. I've put, onions, so, I put onions in my kids' ears when they have ear infections. Wow, I didn't know you could do that. I would do garlic. I didn't know you could do onion. So even it even helps heal ear infections. That's interesting. I didn't know that one. But I know that if you slice an onion and you leave it in the room if someone is sick and then you go back, um, the onion actually collects, a sliced onion collects all the bacteria and all the germs in the room. So it's really important that when you are cooking with onions, to use them all and don't save them. Um, so a little EVOO, and for me here, this is where we put all of those aromatics in, the onions, the garlic, the, um, the ginger, and the turmeric. The, the Luyang Dilao gives the Aris Caldo or the Adlai Caldo such a vibrant color. I feel like it's healthy just looking at it. <laughs> So I kind of made this the way I would also make risotto. Um, Although I made it in a flat bottomed pan because it looks better on camera. I usually make it in a very heavy bottomed pan and I would add the chicken stock that I made earlier with the, the chicken. Um, again, separate, like you guys did your paella, the toppings were separate and then I made the adlai separate also. Um, but I would just cover the adlai with the chicken stock like you would if you were making risotto. Um, so here's where you would add kasubha, or if you have saffron, you can add that too. Um, and just keep adding. So I would add and then let it cook down a little. So this keeps the adlai also a little bit more firm. So I like the texture. I'm a little bit um, picky when it comes to texture. So I enjoy things a little bit more al dente. So for the chicken stock, I boiled um, the boneless breast and the boneless thighs because not all of us like white meat or dark meat. And I did that. That's how I made my chicken stock with that and some aromatics as well. And then I put the chicken stock aside, which is what I cooked the, ad, the adlai caldo with and um, topped it. How about you guys? When you have adlai caldo or aris caldo, what toppings do you like to put on your very nourishing warm dish? I like salted eggs and also oh. little dried fish. On awesome. Top of I've I've never mm. tried it with salted egg. I'm gonna try that. Toasted shallots. Yeah. Yes. That's yummy too. Catherine, we would love for you to try this ad like caldo too. So yeah, bawang. Of course we put that. So on top, I, our favorite toppings are hard boiled eggs, tokwat tokwat, and uh, toasted garlic, and of course the chicken. So I love how 
when we have this dish in the house, um, you know, it's just as much about the toppings as it is about the warm bowl of goodness. And for me, I know my mom used to make this, um, probably more of a lugao based one, not with so much flavors whenever we were sick. Uh, so it's, it's definitely healing. So in terms of healing properties, I think we have a slide. Um, so this is to kind of show you guys, right? Um, again, awesome Adlai from Kiboa Ridge Farms makes this, dish, makes this dish fantastic. You can see in the dish that I made, there's I added a little bit of extra um, chicken stock as well, but all of the ingredients in this dish that so many of us find comfort in a bowl, there's a reason why it's there, right? So the onions, the spring onions calm an upset stomach and improve respiratory functions. The kasubha uh, lowers cholesterol as well as fighting PMS symptoms and it boosts immunity, which is important to do nowadays as well. Ginger, of course, treats nausea. It's good for digestion. We mentioned earlier that everything begins in the gut. The eggs, of course, are good for eye health, um, and it raises good cholesterol, while garlic fights Alzheimer's and dementia. So, of course, and we know chicken also regulates cholesterol. This dish that we all know, we all grew up with, we all grew up with and that we all have had whenever we're feeling under the weather, um, has so many healing properties, and I bet many of us never even know, knew, right? It just it tastes good. It tastes good, and it's um, yummy, and now we know some of the healing properties in there. Um, ladies, I know that we talked about um, the spices and the vegetables and the flowers and the different things that we um, bring into the kitchen. There's also different um, herbs and spices we can bring into the kitchen as well. Um, many of them have healing benefits and they're easy to source here in the Philippines. Um, some of them, I know we talked about this earlier, oregano, basil, turmeric is the luyang dilao, um, blue ternate flowers, which are popping up in my feed a lot more and I'm seeing that a lot more as well. And we mentioned earlier the squash flowers. How, what are some of the herbs that you guys really make sure you have all the time in the kitchen? Yeah, uh, those that you mentioned, we make sure that th that's always just growing around the bakod or in container pots um, in our kitchen. We always make sure these ones, the five that you mentioned that we always have, Philippine oregano, um, so we, we categorize this as like um, like the healing or medicinal herbs and spices that we always use. Philippine oregano, holy basil, turmeric, the blue ternate or blue pea flowers, uh -huh. and squash, okay, squash flowers. So okay. these you can use as culinary ingredients or you can use them as teas. Or you can even use them, some of them you can use as poultice. And some even, mm -hmm. like for example, the turmeric and blue ternate that you can use for crafts for your kids. So there's there's so many uses. So as like a natural dye, you can use yeah. the blue tern ternate. I didn't know how to pronounce that, thank you. Um, yeah, so I actually just tried that blue ternate tea I made a little bit because someone sent me some and I was so excited to try it. It's so healing properties of all of these things. And I know oregano grows very easily, the Philippine oregano, like it's kinda yes. like right? It's kinda like mint. It just it just grows a lot. Yeah. Correct? Yep. That's true. And you just you know, snap off one leaf and chew on it or put it in your juice that day or turn it into a tea. It's just one of the best things you can have. It's you can brew that and add lemon see It's really good. Ooh, fantastic! I will okay, try that. Okay. What was that? Hot or cold or icy? Yeah, it's good. My friend, um, when I was still living in Alabang, my friend must have had a whole garden full of it because she would always share it with me, and I would use it in cooking for like my Italian dishes. Really? I use my Philippine, yeah, 
like chopping it very fine, you know, fresh basil, oregano, and the parsley, and I would use her, because it's a big leaf, so I'd have to chop it, right? So, um, but I never made tea with it. Interesting. So, okay. I think we are ready for another Quiz the Cook question. Everyone tuning in, remember you will be receiving a DIY Ad Like kit from Holy Carabao and Kiboa Ridge Farms that will allow you to make a delicious hot pot of Ad Like Caldo at home. Um, you must live in Metro Manila, of course, to receive your, your goodies. And you must be the third person to answer correctly. So I think Hindi will share um, what our question is, and she will also share the winner. Okay. All right, drum roll. What flower used in Ad Like Caldo lowers cholesterol, fights PMS symptoms, and boosts immunity. <laughs> okay, so we have comments. Oh, Mark Simon Ting. Hello, Mark. You like putting for Pork yes. cloth on your yes. arisaldo. That's yes. yummy too. Um, hi, Richie. Richie says hello to Hindi and Mel. Okay, Ternate, April. Okay, looks like we have lots of answers. Um, what flower? But we have to see. So we will look at the private chat um, for and see. So while we are looking at those answers. I'm going to start plating our ad lie dishes. Lots of answers. Let's see. Number three will be the one who gets it right. You know, third, who is number three? Um, while you guys figure that out, I am going to play the Ad Like Caldo so we can show our views. It's nice and warm. I've had it on a slow, low fire. And because I also wanted to show everyone the versatility of the Ad Lai, I also made um, some Champarado. So do we have an, a winner yet, guys? Yes, we do. Okay, who is number three? The winner is Hill M. Sikat. All right, congratulations, Hill. Did he answer properly? We, we have... He put in hill. Hill. You got it. No, but uh, hill. Your other answer, hill. <laughs> uh oh. There. <laughs> wow, that champarada looks so good. I want the recipe. <laughs> this actually, I just boiled the um. The ad lie with a little bit of water, then added the tablea, and I had some dark chocolate. <laughs> I you can tell I'm going to be eating this later. Um, I had some dark chocolate that we were making s'mores with last night, so I added that to the the pot to keep it warm. It got a little dry while we were talking. I'm going to toss my tofu, my tokwat tokwat. Congratulations, Hill. So this I used cocoa vinegar and um, the I, I did use soy sauce for this, but this is the topping that we will put right on our I'd like caldo just a little bit. And then I have some shredded chicken because we had chicken last night for dinner. So it's just, you know, it, it really also is about using what's here and ready. And we will put just a little because we have a small bowl. So it's for merienda. 
a little bit there. Some green onion. And, and if we like calamansi, I'll just put a little There we go. And of course, for our temperado, I could I not resist. It. It. Yeah, it looks so good. <laughs> and you know what? It's always so filling. I really, these little bowls are all, I I felt like, okay, we're, we'll definitely eat it after. But, and I know this is not the best. And I'm sorry, but I really do love a little bit of condensada. <laughs> To That's go so against our then get perfect right so I wish I could serve this to you guys and I wish I could try your ad light paella I am going to now put okay we have one little napkin here for and we are ready. So guys, super easy to make these dishes at home with Adlai, which of course is a healthier grain that um, both Hindi, Melanie, and even myself, we believe in, in swapping out and having healthier grains as well as healthier pantries. Um, and, you know, just returning back to when we feed our families to food that is more whole um, and food that of course has these healing properties. That's all we have time for today. I do hope you guys learned something new. I know I did. Thank you, Hindi, and thank you, Melanie, for um, joining us. We have so many different things that we learned. I know that everybody um, is commenting also. Uh, so guys, thanks for coming and um, watching and tuning in guys if they were if they wanted to find you on social media or if they wanted to learn where they could take the extended version of this healthy holistic class where can they look where can the viewers um find you and register or tune in or find out when your next class is message us on instagram at holy carabao farm or on our website www.holycarabao.com so we give yeah. um, um, customized workshops, private workshops about healthy kitchens, healthy pantries, indoor gardening as well. So, um, and oh, we want to show off our shirts. I love your shirt. Okay, eat, eat woke and get dirty means get your get your hands dirty in the soil. Even if you're not, even if you live in a small place, a condo, you can start with containers and plant some herbs like the ones we just talked about, the uh, Philippine oregano, holy basil. There's so much you can do with even small spaces. Amen. And I did see that actually on your website and in the Viber group that I joined, you guys actually have an herb starter kit. So if someone wanted to start you know, growing herbs, even in a condo, you can do it, guys. And the benefits of these herbs, of course, are far reaching. So ladies, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for sharing so much with all of our viewers, because I know we are better off now that we know we can make small changes um, for a healthier family, holistic, more holistic kitchen, um, to keep us healthy at this time, right? So tune in in two weeks time where we will be talking about Japanese food. You guys know, same bat time, same bat channel, Tuesday at 4 p.m. We will be live. And of course, you can always check us out on the Rappler Facebook page or the Mama and Manila page as well. Thank you, and we will see you soon. Thanks, ladies. Thank you, Mish. Thank Thanks. you, everyone. Thanks for joining us.